Okay then. It's time. It's time for the news, gamers. Because there actually is news. Okay, do you guys know? Do you guys know that dungeons exist in Guild Wars 2? So, first of all, we have Dragon Bash, but we all knew about that. Dragon Bash, we knew about this stuff. It, it's a festival. It's actually probably my least favorite festival in the entire game. But never mind that, because something very unexpected has actually happened here today. Dungeons have actually been updated in a surprisingly significant way, actually. The big thing here is that um, there is a global dungeon currency, the Tales of Dungeon Delving. And all of the currencies have been blended into this single currency instead, and all the dungeons give the same reward. And you can buy all of the rewards with one currency. It's a very interesting change, actually overall to get the you know do you still actually have to play through the dungeons to get rewards associated with those dungeons but only once right so you don't have to farm a raw to get a raw you have to beat a raw once right? you get to you have to beat through the story mode and the explorable mode and then you can buy the runes right you can then buy the uh the armor skins right the weapons and so on like this actually so yeah you're still going to play it right to do that but you can do any dungeon so it means that this actually means that you can obtain dungeon rewards way quicker because obviously when you um repeat dungeons you get a bit of diminishing returns on how many tokens you get but now all if you do every dungeon in the game every day you can spend all of the tokens on one set of rewards so this actually means that getting stuff like monk runes um or you know nightmare runes and so on like that actually much easier to do if you're looking to gear up in raids because you can just do a whole bunch of dungeons and like burst them down immediately which is a pretty interesting thing. Same with legendary gifts, right? You know, you can just do the... You can do, like, really fast, quick dungeon paths to get any dungeon gift you want, right? And, and I think that is... It is worth noting. I do actually think this is a little... This is a bit of a downside from a game design standpoint, I suppose. It means that the rewards have been disconnected a little bit from the actual currency. For example, you know, like, I remember when I was crafting the Bifrost, right? I would... Because I, that back then, it was actually, you know, dungeons were the thing, right? I crafted it in the core game, and I remember, right, I wanted do an ara full clear every day and i'd just be looking and, and it, it was really annoying because i couldn't find anyone who wanted to do path four like back i back then i what path was it i think it was path three everyone wanted to do a raw path three but nobody wanted to do the other dungeon paths right like it, that's the only one people wanted to do i think there was like a good farm you could do where you could farm loads of gold by kind of killing the first boss or something like that over and over again so that's what that's what everyone wanted to do, right? Uh, and, I, and that was kind of interesting, right? I, I think there is something to be said for, you know, the Bifrost, having that gift of Zaitan or whatever it is attached to that. That's pretty interesting, you know? The, the story of the legendary weapon crafting is to do with that. I mean, obviously, you can just buy it, I guess. But still, you get the idea. I think there is, um, there is something that's being lost there. However, I am actually going to be very, very boring here and say that this is actually um, kind of compressing down the amount of currencies in the game. It's a good thing, right? Like, this is a really common complaint that everyone has, definitely uh, veteran players, that there's just so many currencies. And it's a little confusing to newer players. I don't mind them doing this, right? To really, like, streamline it down a fair bit. Um, and bear in mind, you could actually get dungeon rewards without playing dungeons previously anyway, right? And you still can, by the way. You can still get all of the armor skins and weapon skins by just playing PvP and World Bus or with reward tracks. So it actually isn't really anything lost in this regard, um, because you can just... Just do that, right? You could if you if you don't want to play a dungeon, you don't have to. Well, I mean, in fact, you have to play it more now because you're going to have to actually um, uh, play through uh, the content to unlock the option to buy stuff, right? If you want to buy like the legendary gift, you can still get all the armor and weapons by doing PvP and reward tracks and stuff like that. Uh, but you, could, if you want the gifts, you are actually going to have to play the content at least once, right? So there is an element of that here as well, um, and. Also a fun thing, and this is a super interesting nudge, and I'm very curious to see what's going to happen here with this. The final chest awarded after completing each explorable dungeon will now award one piece of rare equipment. So this probably means an unidentified gear, and that's actually significant. That's an extra 15, 20 silver, right, for a path. And bear in mind, guys, a dungeon path is, if you're just pugging, maybe, maybe six minutes, right? Honestly, less, it could be less than that. Like, dungeons are very quick. Guys. They're really fast. Uh, you know, the speed runs are kind of like three minutes, right? 
for this stuff. If you're just blasting through, you're looking at 10 minutes tops, right, on doing some of the shorter dungeons. So this is actually quite rewarding. And by the way, guys, a bit of a bonus fact here for everyone. Uh, dungeons are actually some of the best gold per hour in the game. Yeah, bet you didn't see that one coming up. And that's true, by the way. Um, doing dungeon tours are extremely lucrative, not only for the, uh, the golden items that you get from the dungeons, but also from the repeatable achievement for completing eight paths, right? Eight paths, then you get yourself an extra free five gold. And players really like wallet gold anyway. And um, dungeons give you a lot of wallet gold, right? You get a lot of the, you know, the gold coin number goes up a lot when you play this. And actually, right, getting this rare piece of equipment, that is significant, right? Let's imagine you do eight paths, right, to do the, you know, to do the five, um, the five gold achievement, right? That's eight pieces of gear. That's an extra um, one and a half gold, kind of in that region, one and a half gold-ish, maybe a little bit less than that, um, in eight paths. That's actually significant, particularly if you, you know, continue to do even more after that. I think this is going to maybe kind of clue people in um, to the rewards in dungeons. I also think, though, just be aware of this as well. Um, to, to me, this does seem a little bit like uh, a change that's laying some groundwork. They've targeted rewards here, but that's not the only thing that could be adjusted with the rewards. Um, uh, for example, one thing that's really unusual about dungeons, it really follows old school MMO reward principles. It gives you a lot of stuff. I did a dungeon tour a while back, and what you notice is that it throws loads of weird items at you, right? You you drop random, uh, you know, uh, random just greens and blues, right? Not unidentified gear. You drop random back pieces, right? Like rare back pieces that have gems and you drop necklaces, right? And weird jewelry that's not really that valuable. You can't really get value out of it. So I, I imagine that the next thing that they'd be looking at here is then streamlining potentially um, down some of the other uh, rewards that you obtain while playing through these dungeons, right? Like playing through these dungeons as well is definitely, I think, a potential area of interest uh, for Arena to look at there as well. Um, so that's... I, I think we, we probably end up seeing more here as well. Uh, dungeons have been a weird thing in the game because we know that they're old content and they're essentially abandoned or whatever you want to call them, but this kind of indicates that maybe not. But, but more importantly, here's the deal, guys. Here's the deal. Okay. Dungeons are MMO mainline content. That's a fact, right? You know, if you're playing WoW, Dungeons. Final Fantasy, Dungeons, right? Everyone knows Dungeons. So, it, and I think this is another thing that's very much targeted at new player and, and ultimately Steam as a result of that. Same as Living World Season 1, right? Because Dungeons... You get mails about them. They're out in the world when you're leveling, right? Like, you know, this is Corticus Manor in Queensdale. And you've got, you know, your Ascalonian catacombs over in Plains of Ashford, right? Like, you actually get uh, mail about them as you are loving, I don't have mine anymore, but you know, you get a mail saying, hey, go and do this dungeon. It's, it's very integrated into the core game uh, when it comes to Guild Wars 2. And actually, and look, I'll tell you a fun story about it, actually, because this, this is a change that I would love to see. Now, th this might be a little, maybe out of, out of scope, might require some jiggling, but a big criticism that I actually had of the original core Guild Wars 2, because I did this, I did this, by the way, because I said, right, I'm going to do 1 to 80, and then I'm going to go back and play the dungeons. That is not actually the intended way to play the game, right? Because if you do that, you actually miss out a huge amount of story, right? Because if you actually don't play the dungeons, you don't actually experience the members of Destiny's Edge um, reconciling with each other, right? Because basically at the start of the game, they kind of broke up. They, they're having a bit of an argument over what happened with Snaf and Logan being a simp, right? All that kind of stuff, right? And how badly that went for them and everyone's, you know, kind of going their separate ways. But the dungeons actually express um, the these members, this legendary guild coming back together. And I actually distinctly remember this playing through the core game, right? I very much remember this, that I was like, wait, what? Wait, why do these guys high like DPS. each other again? Oh, nice. Thank you for the high DPS, by the way. You know, I very much remember, why do these players, like? why do these characters like each other again? Why are they all here? I don't know. And it turns out that you find that out when you play through the story mode, right? You know, there's actually, you know, you have this really cool cutscene where, you know, like, Ritlog, like, grabs Logan and makes him not fall off, right? In Citadel frame, like, all that kind of stuff. And I would actually really love to see dungeons be added into the main story experience in some way, right? Or, or at least, um, uh, you know, at least the story mode, right? Be in some way integrated. 
uh, into the story experience. And that will be a really, really good change from a new player perspective. Particularly now that we would nice, very nicely lead on into season one directly after. Hey, you've even got Aetherpath, right? <laughs> that can fit into the story somehow, I guess. You know what I mean? Uh, that's good content. Good content. Uh, one of the big motivators behind this change came, um, came from a desire to crunch down and streamline the number of currencies in the games. Overwhelming for new players, especially. It's once it was. I completely agree, Grouch, yeah. And just to be clear, uh, that was a comment from uh, Grouch. Guild Wars 2 Overlord. All right, there. And yeah, I think it is true. I think there there is too much, right? There's too much. And we actually see another uh, change that's in this vein. And I think we're going to see a lot more of this too. This is a little bit of a sidetrack. But if we actually look at achievements right now, you'll notice that um, the Ice Brood Saga uh, dailies have now all been streamlined down into Ice Brood Saga, uh, daily Ice Brood Saga that kind of rotates around as opposed to having an individual category. Um, this they might go, wait, why do they do that? Well, bear in mind that there used to be dailies every single day for every map from season three, four, and Ice Brood Saga. They eventually got compressed down to a rotational thing, right? Um, it was pretty crazy. There were a lot of dailies, okay? There were too many dailies. A ridiculous amount of dailies. I think this type of design philosophy that ArenaNet is going right for right now is actually really good. Um, because... This game has got so much! It's an old game, right? It's an old game and it's a horizontal progression game. If Anet add a daily, that daily never goes away, right? It, it literally never goes away. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, um, yeah. I don't, uh, yes, I don't agree with you. I mean, we mean they, right? No, in fact, the Grouch does indeed mean we, because he is the game director. <laughs> Grouch is the game director for Guild Wars 2. But yeah, like, there's so much going on here, and they can't get, they have to consolidate it, right? Otherwise, it's just way too much. And funnily enough, by the way, the rotation stuff I actually think is really good. Now I'm really sidetracking at this point, but I actually think stuff like rotating around maps, stuff like daily dungeon, um, daily strike mission, daily raid wing or whatever, I think this type of content is actually really good in a horizontal game because it kind of funnels people around and almost like enforces a bit of variety, which keeps the game fresh, right? And incentivizes play. And it makes sure that that content is populated. Even though it's old, people are going to be drawn towards it when it's the daily. And that means that the game stays fresh and it stays populated. So I think this type of uh, general design approach is pretty good. Um, but anyway, back to dungeons now. Uh, I think this is actually overall definitely going to be a good change. Uh, I, I will. I have to address it, other I'm going to get roasted for it. I do think that there are some things that um, players are not going to like. I think specifically players are going to be concerned that the harder dungeon paths are actually not going to get played because you can basically get the same rewards by doing the easier ones. I think that's actually a fair point. Um, that is a fair point. Uh, perhaps maybe it will be an idea to make the longer dungeon paths and the more challenging ones grant uh, more currency, right? For example, I think that will be a tweak that could be done down the line, right? To make these, say, a raw path four. Like, I think a raw path four is like the big one, right? Like this, this one is the one that I think in general kind of spooks people a little bit. People are not a big fan of a raw P4, that's for sure. Maybe that one should give a bit more, right? Okay, um, than other ones, right? Than easier, shorter dungeon paths, right? Uh, because I think it does. It, I think the they do have a slight variation on how long the paths are, but it's not. It's on a dungeon to dungeon basis, not a global basis. And now the currency is global, not local. So I think there needs to, maybe there needs to be a little bit of a rebalancing there. Uh, the other thing is, is that <laughs> this is kind of a meme, I guess. But a lot of players were actually very invested. Well, I say a lot of players. A lot of the dedicated dungeon players were very invested in kind of like having the most amount of a certain dungeon token. <laughs> Seriously, this guy posted it on Reddit, and, and he was saying, yeah, I've done a nearly every day. I've got 500k tokens, and I'm sad I'm never going to get to a million. And, yeah, I, I think that's legitimate. I, I, okay, seriously, I, I think that this actually should be talked about. I think perhaps it will be good to have a a, a tracker on how many, time you've, how many times you've done a dungeon, right? Okay, look, because I, I think there are other ways that we can find that. Because I agree that merging together... Right, um, merging together all of this stuff is good for the game. I think it streamlines the game experience, which is, I think, overall definitely a very good thing. But I think that, you know, I, I think it's also fun to see kill count, right? Yeah, a leaderboard, right, for how fast you clear. And now we're getting into copium territory, so I won't go too far on that, right? But I think stuff like that is actually super interesting, right? And could be, um, could make the game, could be like a good trade-off, right? Because, yeah, you don't have your million R tokens anymore. But, you know, you've killed, you, you know, you've done the dungeon a thousand times, right? You've done the dungeon 10,000 times. 
that's kind of interesting. Just like RuneScape, right? In RuneScape, right, you have this concept of kill count, right? Where you, you know, you kill the Calphite Queen 1,000 times, right? You know, you've done the Inferno a million times or whatever. That's pretty interesting. I think that's all right. Um, for sure. And I'm actually super curious if they actually plan to uh, look at more things uh, down the line with dungeons because I think they are actually good introductory content in terms of story and uh, that kind of very initial level of group content. They're pretty easy these days. They've kind of been out power crept in general by the game. Uh, break bars obviously make them a lot easier than normal too. In general, things have moved on, so they're not super challenging as long as you do them at max level. If you do them at low level, they're still honestly going to beat your ass a little bit probably because doing them in greens is going to be a bit of a, it's going to be a little bit brutal. And there's actually a very interesting thing here as well that's actually worth bringing up, is that a few, um, a few bugs have been fixed. I've actually been hearing reports that a f they are actually looking at addressing some issues with dungeons. Uh, specifically right now, it appears they've been looking at map breaks, which might actually upset people a little bit uh, in the hardcore scene because um, there are some very extreme speedrunning strategies that use techniques like this, so that might rustle people a little bit um but i have to say that um dungeons are pretty buggy that's definitely an area of criticism for these this content and if it could be fixed i think that would be good right okay um i think it would be really really good if there could be a bit of a a bit of a look into making sure that this content is actually working right um as intended and working functionally so yeah that's uh that's a let's get some gamers salty i mean yeah look when something changes and you've been playing it for a long time, even if it was kind of busted, right, it's going to feel bad, right? Uh, but obviously, ArenaNet want the game to not be bugged at the same time. So that there is definitely a little bit of a push and pull here between players. Um, but, the, you know, the speedrunners will... You know, the speedrunners will absolutely be, you know, they'll come up with the different strategies anyway, right? Like, those who are interested are, uh, you know, those who are interested are going to go and find other ways to go super, super fast, right? Like, mega speed, hyper speed. Um, so, regardless, it probably works out okay in the end. People are going to grumble a bit, but hey, whatever. Uh, that's how it is. That is how it is. Yeah, if the game looks a bit busted, it's probably not the best look for the game um, overall, you know. And I think it's actually an issue in general. If you were watching someone do a really high-level um, dungeon speedrun, it would probably look really weird because of all the bizarre interactions and weird stuff that happens. And dungeons can be frustrating because of this, right? Like NPC pathing in particular is a bit, <laughs> it's a bit questionable <laughs> sometimes. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe that's a that will be a little bit harder than I think some reward reworks and some uh, map breaking uh, fixes. But I think a look at that would definitely be good as well to kind of make dungeons in it a little bit more up to speed with the quality of content that Arena is putting out these days with with strike missions and stuff on right that's how it is that is how it is yeah exactly right you know i'm not gonna say fix it exactly yeah yeah exactly uh and and ultimately you know the the game if it's broken probably shouldn't be broken even if you like it sorry guys i hate to say it. i hate to be the boring one here but if it's busted probably shouldn't be busted you know uh <laughs> Actually, really, really cool stuff. I did not see this coming, actually. Like, uh, this is a big surprise, I think, in that regard. Uh, and uh, and this actually does set a bit of a precedent, actually, because I think no one ever expected dungeons to ever get touched. Ever again. Uh, myself included, right? I was like, hey, yeah, that's, that's fucking dead, man. Like, no one's caught... <laughs> Like, I, it's like the code base, the developers are scared, right? It's like, it's there in the corner, like all dusty with spiders crawling out, the scorpions and snakes, right? Like, no, just pretend it's not there. Don't look at it. Don't touch it. But hey, uh, that may not be the case anymore. Um, you know, if, if all the content could be updated, I think that's such a really exciting precedent, actually. You know, it really, really does. Um, this means that maybe they would actually look at some of the issues with fractals, for example. I mean, I'm always complaining, agony resistance, remove agony resistance from the game okay just remove it like literally delete it from the game now they might not do that okay that might be a little bit too far but maybe they'd have a look at it they'd have a look at the system maybe it goes account bound maybe they take a look and see uh the reward structures and make that a little bit more streamlined as well although fractals are all right to be fair they're not that bad maybe not the best example right but they did it with stripe missions there i guess did they do it with raids not really no, you got Magnetar. Well, it's not that complicated, to be fair, with raids, I suppose. But you get the picture, right? Um, uh, I think that streamlining this stuff down is overall going to be good. 
And again, I think it sets a precedent that Arena are absolutely willing to fix issues with the game in old content. This is one of the longest standing criticisms, I think, of Arena, is that they just kind of pretend stuff isn't bugged, right? Like, oh, d nope. Let, not looking at that, let's just make something new instead, which, you know, makes sense, right? You, you know, new content is probably going to give them a more positive value, more positive response than fixing some older stuff, right? But I, I do think that ultimately, if you want to present your game, particularly to new players, um, having everything, you know, up to a good standard is very important, right? You know, for example, if you're a new player and you encounter Whisper of Jormag, you're going to go, eh? Huh? Huh? What the hell is going on there, right? Um, you know, uh, what is that, right? That ain't good. Okay, um, but, you know, we'll see, right? Uh, I wouldn't say this thing was a huge investment in dungeons, to be clear, but it's absolutely a part of the game. We shouldn't be afraid to make changes if we need to. There's been some hesitance to work on areas like dungeons because the community might get the wrong impression. But I think as long as we're doing open, transparent about our intentions, it'll be okay. Uh, let's question some more dungeons. They have, yeah, absolutely, yeah. That, I think that's a that's a very fair statement. Uh, again, just to be clear, everyone, that was from uh, Grouch, game director. Uh, at Arena in the chat right now, giving us some insight. Yeah, and sure. Like, I I'm not expecting a new dungeon. Right. Um, I'll uh, I'll underline this a little bit more carefully. I don't think a new dungeon, but could we see additional reward reworks? Actually, yeah, I think so. Could we see bug fixes so that um, a new player will have a smooth experience when playing through the dungeon? Yeah, I think that's a reasonable expectation, right? Um, you know, uh, you know, all the content maybe it, maybe it gets fixed. Hey, yo, Mike, maybe they fix the doppelganger next, right? <laughs> They fix Whisper of Jaw Mag, right? You know, like all this kind of thing. Maybe, you know, they fix some of the raid bugs, right? I, I think that's cool. You know, I think that's cool. Yeah. They, maybe they fix the diminishing returns on dungeons if you do them really, really quickly. There's a possibility of that, you know? <laughs> but no, I do like this. I like this a lot, actually, uh, with regards to that. Very, very cool stuff. I think that's... Did I, did I mention everything about dungeons? I feel like that's, uh, that's all the news. I feel like the news on dungeons... Uh, is more or less covered here as well. I think I covered some of the, perhaps, things that people aren't going to like about this and all the things that are to like about this as well. Ah, uh, for sure. But yeah, there you go. Dungeon news has been completed. There's actually a few nice features here as well. Ah, you know, <laughs> this is actually so good. This is actually a really nice quality of life. Full screen window mode will now take effect on the nearest monitor instead of always using the primary monitor. That's actually really convenient, by the way. Um, because, um, this was actually a bit of a pain point for me, because I've got a dual monitor setup, and sometimes I'd, you know, I'd, I'd want it on the other monitor, and I had a triple monitor setup at one point, and that was actually really annoying. Um, so yeah, that's actually a really nice quality of life for DirectX 11 here as well. Um, uh, oh, and actually, you know what's really cool? Actually, this one is so cool! Check this out, I love that they actually found the time to do this. Um, so, Anet have actually added some absolutely sick new decorations um for the guild hall so now you can have holographic okay holographic racetracks now and this one is really exciting so when you do a beetle race you can kind of go over a little orb right and the orb will um refill your endurance so you can boost immediately um and you can actually go ahead and have a racing power-up now on your tracks. So you can actually place down these power-ups in goals. And that is a huge amount of potential for even more crazy and wacky things that you can do um, using some of these advanced techniques. And a checkpoint. This is actually such a nice thing. It's a very sweet thing to do because th this... I, I want to be clear here about this. This is very deliberate, right? They added this specifically for the beetle racing community, right? This is not like some like, oh, you know, we're just gonna randomly do this, right? It, it's a very specific thing here. This is like a tiny niche in the game and they've very deliberately done it, right? I think that's really cool actually. Uh, and like I said, uh, I think it's gonna fit the aesthetic a lot more because right now if we go to the guild hall, we have a beetle track set up over here and it's brown, right? Okay, it, you know, it's not the most 
not the most visually exciting thing in the universe, right? To like, oh, wow, you know what? Oh. You know, I have seen, there are prettier things, you know what I mean? Okay, it doesn't look that great. Um, if we go and look at it, you can decorate it, obviously, right? With, um, you know, with the other decorations and so on. But ultimately, the track, it is brown, right? It's a little dreary. It's a little drab. Uh, but now you're going to be able to have this really cool holographic, vibrant blue, very much in that Eurobeat neon, which is the culture around Beetle Racing, right? Like, is that Eurobeat stuff, right? That, uh, you know, that kind of very over the top, kind of crazy speed of actually um so this is actually really really cool to be honest very very cool indeed okay and actually you have a checkpoint as well check this out okay approaching near the effect on the ground will cause the briefly disappear and play an effect in your character the animation changes players but for no one entering a checkpoint or collecting a power will not change the decorations visuals or function of any other player that's an interesting piece of tech as well by the way you know what you know what seeing as anet at do requests now okay you know what i want I want full camera disconnection available in the guild hall. Can we get that next? Can we get that as the next thing? Okay, because damn, that would be so insane. If we could actually add like a spectate mode so I could click on people and follow them around the track. That would be insane, by the way. Oh, yeah, by the way, fix the guild hall too. Oh, perfect time to mention this. Last time around a Beatles tournament, it took us over an hour a over an hour to get people into the same instance because the instancing is so fucking broken in guild halls, right? And doesn't work. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> but that's for another time, okay? One step at a time. One step at a time, my friends. Okay. And yeah, it's it's client side. So, you you know, every player can use the booster. Every player can go through the checkpoint. So, you know, you've done it. Very cool stuff, actually. I think this adds a lot of potential here um, for uh, for beetle racing. A lot of potential down the line for making more visually interesting tracks. Uh, and also a lot more potential for really ramping up the difficulty with tactical placements of these power-ups, too. So, actually, really, really exciting, actually. I love to see that. Very, very cool stuff here. Uh, uh, a, a very, un you know, I was a you know, dragon bash, dragon bash, not the most exciting thing in the universe, right? I've seen it better, uh, but we actually got some really nice tweaks um, thrown in here just for fun, right? Bit of beetle racing stuff, bit of gaming, and of course, uh, also we um, uh, we got the uh, dungeon stuff. Which again, you know, I, I think that, um, uh, you know, there's there's probably a little bit more to that uh, down the line when it comes uh, to dungeons. Because, you know, they again, they are, like it or not, guys, they are a core experience um, to the game, right? And a lot of, you know, you'd be surprised how many people play dungeons, by the way. I bet a lot of people are doing them right now. Let's see if they are. How many people are doing dungeons? Look, look at that. You actually have a good chunk of people, uh, well... Maybe not, I guess. But, you know, there, there are some people doing them. The thing is, the groups actually fill really quickly. Like, that's the thing, right? The groups actually fill pretty fast uh, for dungeons, to be honest. And a lot of players do play through them for the story, right? And that's why I think that even Ara, right? Which, you know, is a lot harder and maybe a, a little bit longer, right? Um, than some of the other ones. And will now essentially kind of, I guess, give you less rewards in a way, right? Like less rewards per effort and per time put in. Um, I think it is worth noting, okay? Uh, the players are going to play through with the story. They want to see what happens. They want to, uh, you know, get all the loot. And you'll want to do that to get the loot, to be able to unlock the loot anyway, right? Um, so yeah, there you go. There you go. Dungeons are back, my friends. Get fire. Let's get some dungeon. Let's get, you know, let's get some, uh, let's get some dungeon tours going down, gamers, okay? Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, it feels pretty quick, right? The LFGs feel pretty quick, guys. So, uh, like, this is like, it's like, it's a bit like strike missions. People go, dude, the strike LFG is so dead. Do you know guys why the strike LFG is so dead? It's because people join them really, really fast, right? Uh, I wish my LFG wouldn't bug. Um, this would be a good bug. If you actually, if you, uh, if you do this too much like this and just spam, uh, the LFG gets really confused and then won't load anything. Um, it, it actually will load eventually. It just takes ages, but yeah, it, it's a bit of an, uh, it, it's, it's a bit weird. Very unusual interaction they never left dungeons were dead dude okay and now they are back okay with this omega token very very nice you'd love to see it dungeon tournament you know it's actually funny um mellow was talking about how he wanted to do no yeah brazil was talking about how he wanted to do a, like a dungeon tournament uh, for the anniversary of the game uh i mean I, I was like yeah i'd do that i mean doesn't really change much with this you know with this uh, patch of course but yeah i think that'll be an interesting thing maybe we'll look at that but anyway yes 
Oh, look at this. Okay, wait. Oh, what? Another information here? Fractals are not abandoned? Wow. Okay, look, you know, we go... <laughs> we're getting leaks. Leaks direct in the chat. Uh, not ready to talk about what we're doing there next. Fractals are an important pillar of our endgame. Oh, there we go. We're in business. I love to see that. It's fantastic stuff. And another comment here as well. Okay. Uh, everything's, it's not something we're working on right now. The LFG is not being worked on right now, but it's on the table. I mean, yeah, I definitely think that the LFG needs some improvements. I mean, that's, that's a topic for another damn video at that point, right? Okay, that's another video. Dude, look at all these raids. Dude, look at this. Raids are alive, guys. That's insane. That's crazy. You love to see it, my friends. But anyway, yeah, Dungeon Guide's coming soon on hardstuck.gg. Get ready for it. But yeah, that is the end of that. GG, my friends. GG. The news is over. And what exciting news it really was. Done!